So the very first thing that I need to do to convert this old box truck into a camper is to cut an access door from the box into the cab right there. Hey everybody, this is Bill with Live Simple Live Free. I need to cut a door right there to give me access from the box up to the cab. Without that, when I close the roll door, this is just a box, no way out. So our plan is to cut an access door there and then to also put a door in the side over here. But the access door is gonna be the first project. It's the cheapest and the easiest to do. So let's get started. Now the very first thing to notice about this truck is that the cab and the box are not attached. There's a gap here of about three inches or so. Some box trucks that you buy, they're attached. It's just a matter of cutting a hole. But I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the back of the cab and another hole in the front of the box truck. I actually fretted and thought and figured for quite a while about how I'm gonna connect these two together. Put some kind of a spacer in between there. But I know that there's the box and the cab, as you go down the road, they move differently. They move independently of each other. So I didn't know what I was going to do. So I spent a lot of time on YouTube University and I watched a lot of people do this. And what I discovered is that there is a gasket that is specifically made just for this application. I couldn't believe it. That shows how many people actually convert box trucks and cut a door through. So I'm going to be able to get a rubber gasket that will completely fill that in. I'm very excited about that. Now inside the cab we have the two seats and then we have that jump seat in the center for a third person. There's not a whole lot of room there but that would be great for Carly, our granddaughter, if she's traveling with us. But uh, obviously it's in the way because the door is going to go, the, the pass-through is going to go right there. So I'm going to take this jump seat out. Hopefully it's just a couple of bolts and then uh, after I do that then I can figure out where I'm going to cut the door and the size and all that. But the first step is just to get this seat out, then we can go from there. Now these bolts were in here really tight. And I worked on this one for about 15 minutes and I was able to get it to turn one quarter revolution. And these ones here in the back I couldn't even reach because they were back underneath of the, of the seat. And if I had continued to work on that, I would have worked on it for a week and probably not gotten it out. So I took it down to a local mechanic shop. He put his air tool on at the impact wrench and it took him about three minutes to remove all four of those bolts. And then we just lifted the seat out. I'm so glad I did that. He only charged me 20 bucks for the work. So glad I did that. Now I have an open place here where I can figure out where the pass through door is going to be cut through. And there's the jump seat. It's in perfect shape, but I don't think we have any use for it. It's not terribly comfortable to sit in. And it, I thought maybe we could use it back here somewhere, but I, I don't think that's going to work. I'll probably eventually just end up getting rid of it, though I don't want to do that yet because I, I might find a use for it. I don't know. Okay, there's the center. Okay, so I knew this jump seat would come in handy for something. <laughs> so I have a, a bit of a problem here because I have to cut the hole through and the hole that I cut here on this, on the box has to match exactly the hole that I cut in the back of the cab. Otherwise, the gasket that I go, I'm gonna put in there won't fit. And part of the problem is that I don't know the levels of the floor. I see the level here, I just cut up, you know, measure up three inches and cut it. I don't know where the level of the cab is. If, and if it's different, it might really mess it up. I've got center between there and there marked right here. 
So here's what I've come up with. I'm going to measure up. Sixteen inches and drill a hole through here right straight into the cab. Hopefully this is long enough to, to bridge that gap between the two and go into the cab. Then I know this is 16 inches from the floor. I can go into the cab and measure how far the hole is above the floor in the cab and then I can adjust it and that'll make sure that I know where both floor levels are. All right, that went all the way through. Now this wall is just a piece of three quarter inch plywood and the wall in the back of the cab is actually a thin piece of fiberglass, which really surprised me. I expected it to be metal, but it's fiberglass. So let's go check the hole in the, in the cab and see how high it is off the floor. So here's the hole in the cab and it's dead center this way. Let's see how high it is. Okay, the, the measurement inside the box was 16 inches and in here it's 19 and a half. So that means the floor inside the box is three and a half inches higher than the floor here. So it's a good thing I didn't just cut in here and make a, you know, make the bottom cut and find out it was lower than the, uh, the floor in the box. Now I'm going to be furring out this bottom floor with two by twos so I can insulate it and then piece the plywood on top. So the top of the floor would be two inches above this and then I want a little bit of a lip there. I don't want this door right down at the floor level. So I'm going to give, I guess, maybe a two inch lip. So I'll come up from the, from here, four inches. So that would be the bottom of the pass-through hole right there. And that is 12 inches from the hole. Well, that makes sense because it was 16 inches, so it's 12 inches down from the hole. It would be the bottom of the access hole. Now I apologize that there wasn't enough room in here for me to get the camera in so you could watch me do the measuring. But here's the bottom of the door. Uh, that's actually two inches up from the floor in the box. And there's what, six inches there or something, I don't know. Now, there's this funny round thing here. This is all, I've mentioned this before, this is all fiberglass, not metal. But there's this funny round thing here, and so I was going to just cut it on the inside, right there and there, but that's only 14 inches or something like that. That would be too hard for us to get in and out of. So I decided to go out beyond it. So I have it here and over there, which is 24 inches, two feet. That should be plenty of room. And then at the top, I measured up from the bottom 42 inches and put it here. But then Elizabeth and I talked about it. I don't know how much strength the fiberglass has by itself and having just that amount we were both nervous so we decided to move it down instead of from there to give it an extra two inches across here for strength for the the back part of the cab. So now I'm going to take those measurements and trace them on the uh, wall in the box.
So there's the size and the placement of the door. Now, now that I have this done, I can't go any further for a while. I don't have the rubber gasket. I need to order that. And I, you have to order it by the foot. And I didn't know how much I needed because I didn't know how big I was going to make the door. So I measured this out so that I can measure the circumference of this square. Does a square have a circumference? <laughs> I can measure the outside edge of it and figure out how long that gasket has to be, then I can order it. So I won't be able to get back to this project until I get that uh, ordered. And it might be a couple days, might be two weeks, I have no idea. Well, I know that's two feet, four feet. Seven, nine, ten. Looks like 12, 12 feet would more than do it. So now I can go and order the gasket that I need. As soon as I get that in, then I'll cut the hole and put it in. I'm really excited about it. Now you may be confused here, especially about the sequence of events of the work that I'm doing, because in every uh, previous clip in this video, I didn't have any of the doors or windows or anything in. I did every, I shot everything previous to this a couple days after we bought this truck two months ago, and then I had to wait for several weeks for that gas to, to come in, and in the meantime, I, I uh, installed the door, I installed the windows, we made our trip to Texas and all that. And then quite frankly, I've been really nervous about this, uh, this job. Because once I cut that hole, it's cut. And if it's wrong, if it doesn't work, I'm in trouble. So I've been really nervous about it. I've spent many hours on YouTube uh, University watching others who have done it. I'm still nervous about it, but I'm confident that I can somehow make it work. And it's gotta be done. So here I am back at it finally and we'll get this job done. Now this front wall right here that I need to cut through is made out of three quarter inch plywood. And then as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a gap of about that wide between the box and the cab. And the back wall of the cab is made out of fiberglass and it's just one thin piece of fiberglass. I have to make sure that both holes are cut exactly the same place. So I'm going to try from this side to use a skill saw and hopefully the skill saw will be deep enough that as it cuts through here it'll bridge that gap and also cut the plot or the fiberglass as well. Part of the problem with that the skill saw turns and it blows a saw, a sawdust everywhere. I'm going to end up with fiberglass sawdust all over the inside of the cab. That's not going to be fun. So I'm going to take a sheet and try to tape it up all around the behind the seats to try to minimize sawdust flying around as much as I possibly can. The other option would be to use a sawzall that has a big long blade. We'll re I have one that'll reach all the way through and it'll cut it like this. But as I start to cut in that fiberglass wall in the back, the fiberglass wall would just move in and out with the saw blade as, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't cut. So I'm hoping that this uh, skill saw is going to work. So now I have a sheet making a tent in the back of the cab. Hopefully that will keep down most of the fiberglass dust and keep it from getting up here in the front part. We'll see. I might have a major cleanup that I have to do here. So I did some measuring and I determined that this blade here is not deep enough to reach to bridge that gap, which is rather unfortunate. So I'm going to have to cut out this side and then trace uh, in there and cut out the other side separately. Not only will that not be as, as neat and clean, but it's going to take a lot more time.
There it is. At least half of it. So on the back wall of the cab, there are these things here that I guess I could just describe as being ribs designed to give extra strength to the back wall. But I don't know what's inside of there. I don't know if there's any kind of wood in there or a metal brace to give strength or if there's any wires running through there. I have no idea. So I have decided to do some exploratory surgery, some exploratory cutting to find out because I didn't even know really what this was. I thought and assumed it was just a one sheet of fiberglass. So I cut in this little square here and what I discovered is that it's not just fiberglass, it's actually a piece of quarter inch plywood with fiberglass sandwiched on both sides of it. So it's much thicker than I thought. So I'm going to have to adjust the mounting system that I'm going to use for the gasket that goes in here. Next thing I did, I really wanted to find out what was in those ribs. So I cut this out because there's a rib that runs right up through here. As I cut through there, hoping I'm not going to hit any wires or anything like that. And here's what I found. There's no metal inside of it. It's basically, this is the plywood. It's basically just a piece of uh, cardboard uh, tubing, half of it there, attached there. And then the fiberglass just goes over the top of it. And that gives a lot of extra strength. But that's good news that I didn't have to cut through any metal or wires or anything like that. So... Since I had to change my whole plan because the skill saw blade wouldn't go all the way through, now I have to cut it with this. Just as I suspected as I'm doing this, this is going in and out and it's hard to make it cut. So I got to actually put my foot there and brace it while I make the cut. And then there's this metal piece here. I'm going to have to cut through that. I have a, a metal cutting blade, so I'll cut through that with the metal. So now that I've got this hole cut, let me show you the gasket. This is the gasket that I bought that's specifically made for this application. It spreads across and it'll cover this. And here's how it's designed. It's got a metal clip embedded in each end. And it's designed so that that metal clip will go right onto a piece of metal like that. Stick on it and it stays there. Now if this doesn't stay and it starts to slip off, I can put a couple of set screws in there to hold it. But uh, that's how that works. And I already knew that I had a piece of plywood here and it wasn't going to go on there. So I got this metal uh, that I'm going to screw like that. To give me that lip to uh, to be able to mount the gasket to. Now on this side over here, I thought it was just going to be one piece, thin piece of fiberglass that this would be able to slide right onto. But then when I saw what I had here, but this is thicker, I realized this wasn't going to work. So I had to come up with something different. So I was going to try to adapt something like this also. But then I went and got just a piece of metal, flat metal like this. What I'm going to do is just screw it right there like that so that this will also clip on to that side and I think that'll work just fine.
and I'm going to put this on here on the rather than on the inside uh, for two reasons one is I've got this lump here this rib here and this won't uh, that would interfere with it also by putting it outside uh, I'll protect this edge from weather and this one I'll put like, like this rather than like this to also try to get the gasket on this edge and protect this from the weather. So let's see how this works. I don't know, I probably should have laid this out and pre-drilled all of these holes. Probably would have been more efficient. <laughs> Actually, it's better this way because the, the cut that I made here on the wood isn't completely straight because I was hand holding a, a skill saw and it wavers a little bit. So I'm putting these in the high points. I don't want to put it into a low point where if I pull it tight, it's going to push this in. And then this gap here, I'll caulk. Now this top piece, I did pre-drill. Now I have to cut these end pieces, these angles on here to make that fit in there. Fortunately that metal is just thin enough that I can cut it with tin snips. I don't have to get a hacksaw out. So that makes it much easier. Now when I watched other videos on YouTube of people doing this, they actually just made it square. But I was kind of nervous about whether or not this gasket would make a complete 90 degree turn. It probably would have, but I did it like this just to help this, just to help this make that turn better. Also, doesn't matter so much on, on this wood side, but on the fiberglass side, I thought that doing that would make it a little bit stronger too. So that's why I did it that way. Now I got this edge finished all the way around. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the, the cut that I made in the wood isn't exactly straight. See right there? It's a little bit of daylight right there. Also a little bit across the top here. So I want to make this completely weather tight. So I'm going to go and put some caulk on the back side here. It'll hopefully fill in that gap. Okay, that's kind of awkward because of this in there, there. I can't get it back there where I need it. So I just got to kind of put it in the general area and then smooth it out with my finger. Yeah, it's working pretty well. That'll definitely seal up that gap. Well, it's not pretty. 
let the caulk is done it will definitely seal that gap and since it's back here between the, the gap here um, it'll never be seen so I'm happy with that so now I've got the box side done I'm ready to do the cab side I got this metal piece that needs to go in here like I said earlier I wanted to, I wanted to go here rather than here because um, this is in the way and also I want to try to protect this from weather as best as I can but here's the problem if I pre-drill the holes and put it in here then I have to still drill the holes through this where those holes in the metal are and I can't there's no way to get a drill in there to do that so I'm going to have to drill it from the other side Now when I put this in here, it's important that this is flush with that. I want the, uh, the gasket to be straight. If it's in too far, then the gasket will be like that. If it's out too far, the gasket will be here. And I don't know what that would do with, with the turn here if it's not straight. So I got to just kind of eye it up and make sure that's straight with that. This is really awkward with only two hands. Now this piece of wood here isn't really thick enough for me to just put a screw in it. So I'm going to put a bolt that goes all the way through. It's the only way I, t I trust it. And on this side I put a, lock, a washer and a lock washer because I don't want this loosening up while I'm driving and then I can't get in there and tighten it up. So there's a lock washer. And then a nut. So that's what I'm going to have to do all the way around the whole thing. I'm not going to film it because it's just going to be slow and tedious. I'll come back when it's done. So I now have the metal on both sides of the gap and I am ready to put the gasket on. So now as I showed you before I don't know if you can see this or not. This has a metal clip inside of there. And that just clips, slides right onto this. On both sides. See, that's why I wanted to cut an angle instead of 90 degrees because it goes around that corner a little easier, I think, right there. Thank you. 
So I really like the way this works. See it's flexible in between. So the cab and the box can move separately. Goes nicely around that corner. With okay, I think this is designed to just press right onto that metal piece there and stay there like that. I don't know if it will, but I've actually now been driving it around for a couple days just like this, and it is just staying in place. But I can always put a little set screw through there into the metal every so often if it starts to separate. And I think I figured out what I'm going to do with this joint. I don't want to just cut it off flush there because then rain could get in. I want it to have an overlap like that so rain will, will shed off of it. So let me show you what I think I'm going to try to do with this. So here's what I think I'll do to overlap this. This won't press onto that because the metal in there won't fit over this. So if I take the rubber off and expose the metal, then I can cut the metal off right here. Now I can press that on and then this can go over it like that. Yeah. And then I'll just put a screw right there to hold it. What do you think? Yeah, I think that'll work. Here we go. Okay, that's going to hold it all in place. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this gap right here air can come through there but water is not going to water is going to run off maybe I can uh, get some uh, rivets and put a rivet through there and there to, to seal that I don't know I'll have to see okay so it is now completely finished and I did go ahead and put some screws in there to hold the, the rubber on so it won't fall off See the screws? I like it. Well, dear, so what do you think? Um, this is amazing. I mean, it, this is the biggest step you've taken so far even more than the door on the side here to make this feel like it's turning into an RV. Yeah. To have this open like It feels this. like an RV now instead of like a moving truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even, even with the windows and the door, that helped yeah. a lot. But this this just is amazing. So. And uh, I have the temporary bed here that's going to end up being built into what we have up here, which is the top. But I'll have something I can grab a hold of on the side. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do just fine. So we do plan to put a door on here. It'll be a sliding door, slide yeah. over there, come back over here, but that'll be in the next video. Yeah, yep. So, Good job, hon. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Cool. Thanks for watching. Yep, live simple. Live free. You be blessed. Yep, love you guys, and we'll keep sharing what's going on. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.